depression affects 121 million people around the world, but only about half of them are ever treated for it. There are also different types of depression. There's mourning or grief, which is mostly from a definitive event and comes in five stages. There is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Grief can generally be solved with time or hugs. Then there is mild depression called dysthemia. The symptoms of dysthemia are that more days than most, you are mildly or moderately depressed. You have brief periods of a normal mood, and you find it hard to live life to the fullest. Dysthemia can be helped with time and therapy. There is also severe depression, which is generally more noticeable than dysthemia, but more dangerous as well. The symptoms of severe depression include agitation, restlessness, irritability, or anger, becoming withdrawn or isolated, fatigue or lack of energy, feeling hopeless or helpless, worthless, guilty, and salty, a loss of interest or pleasure in activities that were once enjoyed, Sudden changes in appetite, often with weight gain or loss. Trouble concentrating. Thoughts of death or suicide. Trouble sleeping or sleeping too much. And self-harm. Severe depression is a daily struggle to live with. Everything you do is a marathon. I talked to a few teenagers suffering with depression to get a better understanding of how it affects you. This is what they had to say. When I was in about fifth grade. Second half of eighth grade-ish? So, um, maybe halfway through my freshman year. Around the end of ninth grade. Uh, towards the end of seventh grade. Uh, around seventh grade. I try to uh, talk to my friends and my family when I'm when I'm feeling really bad. Um, I make sure I'm I'm doing things that that make me happy. And when it really gets to get bad, um, I uh, I do try and seek help. Smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol. Self harm, and I did a lot of art, which really helped. Suicide. Yes. Why? Because I felt like there was nothing left. I felt like it was the only way out. That the pain was never going to get any less. And the only way to escape it was by dying. No. 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 Yes. Why? Uh, I just felt like it wasn't getting any better. Might as well just end the suffering. Yes. Why? Um, I just felt there was nothing left. Um, talking to people helps a lot. Um, exercise, um, reading, writing, doing art, things to distract yourself really help. Knowing that things are going to be okay, in general, just knowing that I have a positive impact on the world to a certain extent. Talking with my therapist and my friends and my, and my parents really help, um, and writing as well. I write a lot and it helps me to make sense of my feelings. Being with my friends, walking my dog, nice weather. Exercise, medication, spending time with people I care about. Talking to people, getting the help I needed. Yes. And why? Because part of my depression is feeling really numb mentally, and I got so sick of that that I was so desperate to feel something that 
it, I didn't care if it was pain. It, I needed to feel something physically because I didn't feel anything emotionally. No. A couple of times, yes. Why? Um, it wasn't about depression, it was more about anxiety and it was um, uh, building stress and um, it was uh, the, the most um, drastic way, I think, that I could think to just uh, get rid of the anxiety, even just for a moment. I've recently figured out it's more of a feeling of control. When everything is out of control, that's one thing that is in my hands only. I never really understood why, but it did seem like it helped. As long as I could feel something. Medication has helped me a lot. Um, it has stabilized my mood more. It has made me more able to focus. Um, medication has helped me a lot. Well, I seem to care a lot less about things that would normally send me into an emotional tailspin. Um, it's, it's helped me to control my emotions and, and um, I, I don't feel as empty anymore, I guess. Um, it's helped to regulate some chemical imbalances and make it a little easier to get through your day. Helping me focus on other things. Life is harder. Um, it takes more effort to do things that people without depression can just, you know, do no problem. Um, it feels a lot like you're missing something sometimes, and and you just um, you sometimes don't want to be around people, and you see people that are a lot more happier than you, and you want to be like that, but you don't know how. It's harder. Everything requires more effort. Just kind of like a feeling of hopelessness and despair. Like, no matter what you do, your life's going to be shit. It's hard, but I get through it. I want people to understand that it's not a fad. It's not something that you can just brush off. It's not something that'll get better in a day or two. It's a chemical imbalance in your brain and it's not something to be taken lightly. That people with depression aren't just like emos and goths and, and people that cut themselves and, and that depression and even, even self-harm is not always concurrent with suicidal thoughts. It's not as simple as just why don't you feel happy or it's going to get better. It's a matter of actually helping one another and trying to support each other when they're having a hard time. A lot of people seem to think depression is just being in a bad mood and just like being a whiny little kid. But there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than that. That a lot of people think depression's a joke and it's not. Um, a lot of people do self-harm for the attention, and others don't, so you can't just assume. I got the opportunity to talk to two therapists from a program called ICAPS. This is what they had to say about depression. How did you decide to become a therapist? Um, I decided to become a therapist when I was working at a daycare in high school and I saw things going on with families that were very interesting to me. Um, a lot of different dynamics and complications that I wanted to explore further. I decided to become a therapist because I like helping people and I am a people person and I'm very social. What is ICAPS? So it's a family-based program working to help children and families in four different domains of their lives, which are the individual, the family, the school environment, and then the community. How long have you been working with ICAPS? One year. Exactly. How do you help depressed people? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I can't answer that in one sentence, but um, I mean, it depends on every child is different, every person is different, every situation is different, but um, uh, a big thing that I focus on specifically is positive thoughts. 
So however we can interact and intertwine those positive thoughts into their daily lives, helping them with their daily functioning, things like that is what we tend to focus most on. Teaching them skills mm -hmm. that can help them through rough times. Why did you choose to work with ICAPS? I chose to work with ICAPS because I believe that working in the home around the person who's struggling true environment is where you get to the root of the actual issues. Um, so I believe that you're able to see a lot of what's really taking place when you're actually in their daily routine and in their daily lives. Ditto. <laughs> what is the goal of ICAPS? The goal of ICAPS is to be able to help each um, client learn how to um, cope through their struggles in a safe manner um, and our goal is to be able to discharge each person to a lower level of care um, outpatient or an after school program something that doesn't require um, intensive therapy like what we provide mm -hmm. yeah and just keeping oh, our focus is always keeping the client in the home so that there's no need for an outplay why does ICAPS work it really, I think what it comes down to, I think what we always find is that it works when both the client and the client support system want it to work. If you don't have the motivation or the interest in improving those struggles, nothing will get better. So Silky and I frequently are saying we're never going to work harder than the client. And when we see that, we know that the challenges will continue until they're ready. How do you help people that don't want help? You help people that don't want help. I it's that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just basically put it out on the table. You know, this is your this is for your future. This is for your benefit. Um, we remind people that we're not going to be around forever, um, and that you know, taking advantage of the situation of the services that are being provided is important um, and ultimately I mean if someone doesn't want the help then we we have mm -hmm. to respect that we have to respect that and just hope that um, when they are ready they do reach out mm -hmm. for support and services and we say that when you're ready let us know but services are put in place for people that typically are not ready mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know if you're ready you're, you're usually already making those moves so a lot of time people are given ICAPs when they more like forcefully in a lot of situations um, and so when when that's what's going on it's very very difficult to work with them but you have to just like Sophia said put it on the table we're very real in this job is there anyone beyond help I don't believe so or I wouldn't be in this job Means you said it. <laughs> <laughs> the treatments for depression vary depending on the person. Some may be treated with medication along with therapy. Some may just need therapy. Some may go to an inpatient program to get the help they need. Everyone is different, so everyone needs to be treated differently. If you have depression, don't be afraid to talk about it. You are not alone. Find a friend, parent, guardian, teacher, or coach to talk to. There are also websites and telephone numbers you can use if you are ever in a crisis or just need to talk to somebody. If someone you know is depressed, speak up. They may be angry at first, but once they get help, they will be able to see reason again and they will thank you. Depression preys by isolating and silencing its victims. The only way to stop it is to stick together and speak up. Depression is strong, but we are stronger.